Welcome to Savvy Sabs Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Salvati. So guys, I am officially back from the beach and apparently a lot happened while I was on vacation. I don't have time to cover everything on this episode, but we will talk about two of them. So I am going to talk about Derek Chauvin's sentencing and how I feel about that and the statement that his mother made. And the other thing I want to tell you, I'm going to start off with that. So there's no Q&A today because I want to tell you this. Apparently, while I was on vacation, I gained more than half of my YouTube subscribers on Rockfin. I don't know what happened. I was only gone a couple of days. I didn't record or upload new material, but something triggered that. And I'm actually not quite sure what that is, but thank you to those of you that also follow me on Rockfin. If you don't, please be sure to do so. Rockfin is a little bit different from YouTube. It gives content creators a little bit more freedom. And you can also tip creators on Rockfin as well, which you can't really do that on YT. But I'm super excited about that. Some of you have emailed me and asked me, like, how can you support the show? The best way that you can support me is through Patreon or PayPal. Both of my links are in the description below. My goal is to eventually turn this office into a studio so you guys don't have to look at my my, uh, brown blinds behind me all the time that my mom always laughs about. But uh, that's, that's my goal, and I'm working on getting there. So, yeah. So today's news. So while I was gone, Derek Chauvin was sentenced to 22 and a half years. I'm going to tell you how I feel about that sentence. But before I do that, watch this. Based on the verdict of the jury, finding you guilty of an intentional second degree murder while committing a felony under Minnesota statute 609.19 subdivision 2 paren 1. It is the judgment of the court that you now stand convicted of that offense. Pursuant to Minnesota statute uh, section 60904, counts two and three will remain unadjudicated as they are lesser offenses of count one. As sentence for count one, the court commits you to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of 270 months, that's 270. That is a 10 year addition to the presumptive sentence of 150 months. This is based on your uh, abuse of a position of trust and authority and also the particular cruelty shown to George Floyd. You are granted credit for 199 days already served. Pay the mandatory surcharge of $78 to be paid from prison wages. You are prohibited from possessing firearms, ammunition, or explosives for the remainder of your life. Provide a DNA sample as required by law. Register as a predatory offender as required by law. And then you will receive a copy of the order and also the attached memorandum explaining the court's analysis. Anything further from the state? If this needs to be said, we just ask that it be executed forthwith. Defendant is remanded to the custody of the sheriff to be transported uh, back to the DOC or whichever custody is currently holding him. Woo! 22 and a half years. I want you guys to like think about the expression that was on his face. Notice the look he had on his face. He was surprised. He was shocked. But see, that's what happens when you're not used to being held accountable. That's why he has that look on his face. How do I feel about the sentence? Mm. 22 and a half years, it sounds like a lot. I know some people feel, yes, justice was served. I personally don't. I think about the fact that there are people in prison right now serving 20 years for marijuana because of Joe Biden's crime bills for marijuana. So Derek Chauvin being sentenced to 22 and a half years. Just just think about that for a second. I want you guys to think about this. They pretty much gave him the same sentence or similar sentence that they gave some people for marijuana. 
Think about that. I don't feel that 22 and a half years is enough. And to be honest with you, he's probably only going to serve 10. Yeah, he's shocked. He's surprised. It is what it is. But I don't feel sorry for Derek Chauvin. 22 and a half years. I feel like it should have been more. I really don't think he's going to serve 22 and a half years. Do you guys remember Oscar Grant? A lot of people forget about this case. You know, Oscar Grant was laying on the ground on his stomach. He was handcuffed with his hands behind his back. And a police officer shot him in the back, killing him. There was a movie about it. It was called Fruitvale Station. I encourage everyone to watch that video and then research after. Watch that movie per se. It's a powerful story. Did you know that the police officer that killed Oscar Grant, did you know that he only served one year? And this is what I'm trying to tell people about this sentence in particular. Just because he was sentenced to 22 and a half years doesn't mean he's going to serve 22 and a half years. Nine times out of 10, he won't. He's still a cop. They look out for each other. Derek Chauvin's mom also had a statement. I want to play that and I want to give you my thoughts about her. I am the mother of Derek Schollen. I am here to speak on behalf of my entire family. On November 25th, 2020, not only did Derek's life change forever, but so did mine and my family's. Wait a minute, let me pop out. (laughs) I'm sorry, I got to say this really quick. So she said that Derek's life changed forever. I just want to remind everyone that Derek Chauvin still has his life. George Floyd does not. Derek Chauvin's life changed because of the decision that he made that day. That's his fault. That's not on anyone else. That is on him. So... I'm already not buying this story, this little statement, this sob story that she's giving right now. I'm not buying it. I don't feel sorry for Derek Chauvin. Next. Derek devoted 19 years of his life to the Minneapolis Police Department. It has been difficult for me to hear and read what the media, public, and prosecution team believe Derek to be an aggressive, heartless and uncaring person. I can tell you that is far from the truth. My son's identity has also been reduced to that as of that as a racist. I want this court to know that none of these things are true and that my son is a good man. Derek always dedicated his life and time to the police department. Even on his days off, he would call in to see if they needed help. Derek is a quiet, thoughtful, honorable, and self selfless man. He has a big heart and he always has put others before his own. I got to come out. That's all you really pretty much need to hear. I'm not going to play that woman's whole entire statement, but I do want to say this out of respect for George Floyd's family. I'm not going to play that, that video on here. I just want to have that respect for them. And I have talked to family members of his before in the past, and I'm not going to go there, but I want to reference that because 
his mom said that he's a good man. He has a big heart. For those of you that watched the George Floyd video, based on what you saw, the behavior by Derek Chauvin, does that look like someone who has a big heart? Does that look like someone who's a good man? Because it sure didn't to me. She said he served 19 years on the police force, okay? She said the things that are being said about Derek Chauvin are not true, all right? Let me remind everybody that Derek Chauvin has a history of police violence, of police brutality towards underrepresented minorities, not just Black people, Native Americans as well. So there was a pattern here. This wasn't the first time Derek Chauvin used aggressive force. So for his mom to say he's not that person, they're saying things about him that's not true. Uh, no, boo. He's exactly who we saw in that video. He has a history of this type of behavior. Maybe, just maybe, her son isn't who she thinks he is. And we see this happen time and time again. When the Columbine shooting happened, I remember this like it was yesterday, the mother of one of the boys that was involved in the shooting said, I've never seen this type of behavior from him. He's a good kid. We hear that a lot from parents when their kid or their child is involved in, in, in a shooting or killing. You notice that? They were a good kid. Sometimes your children don't always show you who they are. Sometimes they're one way in front of their parents and they're different when they're not around their parents. The two boys that were involved in the Columbine shooting, they were stockpiling guns. The parents didn't even know they had them in the house. So when mothers come forward and they're like, He's a good kid. He would never do anything like this. Like, okay, you're their mom and that's your child. So of course, no mother wants to believe that their kid could do something like this. But that doesn't mean your kid didn't. She may not want to believe that Derek Chauvin is racist because he's her son but that doesn't mean that he's not. I think that that is very important because at the end of the day, no one wants to admit that someone in their family would do such a thing. But people have a way of putting on a mask. So I still don't feel sorry for Derek Chauvin. He knew what he did that day in front of a crowd of people telling him, get off of him. He's not breathing. You're going to kill him. He was on George Floyd's neck for over eight minutes, eight minutes. George Floyd was handcuffed and he was on the ground. This guy's telling you that he can't breathe. There was no reason for you to still be on his neck. Shouldn't have been on his neck to begin with. He was smiling at the camera. The young woman who captured the video, you saw him looking right into the camera smiling. That's not the face of someone who has a good heart. That's not the face of someone who's a good man. So just because it's your child 
and you want to believe that they wouldn't do this and you want to believe that they're not that way doesn't make it so and Derek Chauvin's mom I think she needs to sit down and think about some of the things that her son has done those 19 years that he was on the police force I think she needs to go back and look at a pattern of behavior that he has had while he was on the police force. And then I want her to pretend like he's not her son. I want her to pretend like he's a man that's not related to her. Sometimes you have to remove the intimate connection to really see things and to really see people for who they are.